Hello everybody, welcome back to this tori tutorial, man I can't even talk, and uh, this video I wanted to talk about string indexing. So I don't know if you guys have been watching this whole series from the beginning or if you just kind of jump in wherever you want, but earlier in the series we talked about uh, list indexing, where each item within a list was assigned a specific number to that item. Now. With strings, the same thing works with characters. So we can take individual characters within a string. So I'm going to illustrate this. First, let's create a variable. We'll just make call it yo, and we'll assign it the value lemonade. So now we have this, and if we want to print it, we can just go yo, print yo. Now, I want you to think of the indexes for this here. I brought over paint just to make things a little bigger and clear. Now, how do the indexes work? Well, it starts at zero on the left. So this, let me get a select tool. This character, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then finally seven. So the way we can basically um, print an individual character for that, what we can do is we can go and then right after the variable put brackets sort of how we used with lists we put these brackets and we say the index number that we want to print so if I put one it should print the, uh, the letter with the index one which was E because L is zero E is one and so forth so let's try it and you see it prints E we can also print seven which will print the last E because zero one two three four five six seven now, what I want you to understand is I want you to think of index a little bit differently than you have been. Instead of thinking of them as like characters, try to think of them as spaces between the characters. And the reason why is, I'll show you, it'll make a lot of sense. Here, uh, let me figure out, let's get a, let's get a straight line tool. And then let's, let's get a new color. Let's go with red. So what I'm going to do is put these lines between these characters and think of these as your index points, okay? So now when we're talking index numbers, the first red line is 0, the second red line is 1, the third red line is 2, and so forth. So we still have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 red lines, but the first one as we mentioned earlier, starts at zero. So the final number we get is seven, because the index numbers go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the why the reason why I want I'm mentioning this to you is because I think it makes the things a lot more clear. Because you think this is before a letter, this index is before a letter, that's why it's zero. We haven't had we haven't reached any letters yet. And then as we pass L it goes to one. So when we do something such as print yo zero like this, well what it's going to do is it's going to print one individual character starting at index zero. So it starts here and then it goes one character over and prints everything within that range so all we get is the letter L. You see? I just think that makes things a lot more clear rather than thinking the first character is zero, which just confuses me and probably millions of other people. So if you think of it this way, now when it says print zero, it's basically saying I'm going to print one character start, starting at the index zero. So the index zero covers this much range. All right, so that is a really cool way to think about it. Another thing that's cool with Python is we can use negative indexes. So what I can do is rather than having, you know, 0 through 7 this direction, we can have indexes going the other direction. So for this, we have a an index right here. And it goes backwards. So this now this one, whoopsies this red line is 0, this is negative 1, negative 2, 
negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, and negative 8. The way this works is when we print an individual index, let's say we print index 3. What, uh, how the way Python does this is it, I'm sorry, negative 3. Let's say we print negative 3. The way Python does this is it first finds the index. So this is 0, this is negative 1, negative 2, and then negative 3. And just like in when we had a positive indexes, it goes one character. So this will be negative index 3. Now I want to print this out just to illustrate that. So we should get A. So print yo. And what we're going to do is print negative 3. A. So yeah, you can see this would be negative 3. The best way to familiarize yourself with the way this works is just to have uh, consistent practice with it because when you're first starting out it can be a little confusing. You might get one less character or you might get the wrong character or so forth. But just, just continue to think that the numbers, I'm sorry, the uh, indexes are between the letters and they always go one this direction. So that would be if we're counting, what, let's try to figure out what index this letter would be. Well, we could go this way, left to right, which if that's the case, it would be 0 to 1, 1 to 2. So this would be index 2, or 0, 1, 2. If we think of it the other way, it'd be 0 to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So what we could do is, hear me. What we could do here is we can just see that we could say print. So we could print it from the front. Zero, one, two. We should get M. Or we can print it the other way. Zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. Ooh, it worked. All right, great. So hopefully that helped you understand indexes just a little bit more. And the same concept applies to uh, like lists and stuff. So if you are confused with list items and indexes, just apply this to that information and it will work pretty much the same exact way. I don't think I'm going to make a whole other video over that, though, because it will just be repeating myself. So thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.